Good morning, folks. Today we've got weather, earthquakes, two incredible pieces of science news as well. We're looking at the skeleton here of an active region, so let's begin at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last day on our sun without sunspots in the complex region crossing center longitudes. But it does have a coronal hole. It magnetically connected to Earth yesterday, and so the solar wind should intensify around Friday. It is calm now, but a quick note. The spikes upward are cosmic ray hits, errors in the feed. It's well known and major deficiency as a satellite detector. But more importantly, 100% of magnetosphere models can't handle such data. And since they are all based on the solar wind, cosmic ray errors make magnetosphere models look like the field is collapsing. How do you know it didn't actually happen? Because you are online and using electricity. Little logic goes a long way. Top quakes of the last day surged to life after the disaster prediction app sent out that earthquake warning based on the coronal hole, two large blot echoes in the West Pacific, and a 5.8 in the Carlsberg Ridge of the Indian Ocean. Top weather event was spotted forming through the Portland, Oregon skyline. The twister toppled trees, damaged a good number of homes in the area. Let's move on to the science. We're starting with a major feature in the galactic plane. For a while in the 1800s, it was the second brightest thing in the night sky, zooming in on Eta Carinae. We're going to halt the zoom right there. Even centuries after its grand outburst, its repetitive variability continues. From visible to X-ray, the region pulses. And it wasn't long after spotting the double-lobed interior to the dusty glowing region that the models came together, blaming a binary system that has an extremely eccentric orbital dance which cuts and carves the dusty outflows as it whips around every five years. Today, Hubble is delivering a brand new UV image and it is by far the most detailed ever and one of the most incredible real electromagnetic radiation imaging efforts of anything in the sky. The reason we took such a roundabout way of getting to today's release is because there is one way of seeing even closer, radio waves, submillimeter arrays, and while they're not quite as pretty, when they zoom in, they show approximately one star. Where is the other one? Up next, the tsunami of plasma universe bombshells continues. This time, Keck teams up with NASA and Caltech to track the hydrogen gas flowing in the circumgalactic medium and cosmic web nearby. To their shock and amazement, they first found that the gas was feeding down onto the galaxy in the same spiraling helical pattern in which the galaxies themselves were spinning. They then sought to find where these filaments of streaming gas were coming from. They traced them back to the cosmic web. From the large-scale skeleton of the universe is fed the material that ends up in star-forming regions, becoming stars. Again, that's the large-scale currents, branching out like fingers of lightning that twist in a vortex pattern into electromagnetism-dominated zones. It was almost one year ago exactly that Sophia demonstrated that plasma turbulence and magnetic fields dominate those regions, rather than gravity. Alma confirmed it this week. The week before, we learned that the cold gas halos around the galaxies are co-rotating, and today, the story is completed from cosmic web feeding to star formation, it's electromagnetic action in the plasma universe. We greatly appreciate your support. Website members will have another deeper look for you today. July planetary geometry and it's the biggest alignment lineup in four years. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 4.35 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.